Introducing a new OS is always an exciting moment. It is allowing us to talk about new innovation that we deliver as part of our overarching mission and vision to keep you safe. OS 7.2 is no different. I invited John to join us today and talk to us about how 7.2 help elevate some of the industry most challenging initiative. Welcome, John. Thank you, Erin. All right, challenge number one comes okay. from CISO and CSO mainly. They feel like they have an inefficient security intelligence with no real-time impact, which makes it almost impossible to keep ahead of never seen before attack. Basically, they're asking, can we even keep up with new threats? I think it's getting harder and harder. And I think um, I split security companies into detection companies. Yeah, so we detect it but really you gotta do something about it. So you need that protection. And so uh, Fortinet always makes sure that we have the detection component as well as the protection piece inside there. And that we have it not just at the network level, but at the endpoint and the mail and everywhere else. I think a good example in, in 40 OS 7.2 is we've now taken what was, used to be a, a detection sandbox capability, and now we've put prevention in there. So if we find something, we can stop it getting through the system. You know, previously you would have to use something got detected, you would have to run around trying to find where it is, where did it go. Now we stop it dead in its tracks. So what you're saying is historically you would let the file go into the environment, especially in networking. In endpoint, we already started to hold it long time ago. So we hold it until we get the vertic. Right. Now we're bringing it into the network so people don't have to play hide and seek anymore with a malware after it's detected. Right, right because endpoint had that already. You know, email was the same. You wouldn't let a, you know, a piece of spam or phishing email go through. Network was a bit different because they looked at performance being an issue. So we've solved that problem with 7.2. We can f detect it and also stop it. So a lot of our customers keep uh, asking about ransomware. It's top of mind for them. And the ransomware part is usually the second step of the attack. It starts with exploitation of vulnerability. What you can tell us about the addition that we added for device security and IPS? Well, for device security, it's, it's important to know what device it is and give it some context. Um, for IPS, more and more we're making sure that we can relate that uh, signature or that capability to the device itself to make sure we can stop it. And we also have the virtual patching today as well. Well, yeah, that, I mean, a lot of people use IPS for the virtual yep. patching, and, that, and that's very important. The question is making sure you got that virtual patching across all the vulnerabilities across all the devices. I think last year there was... 20,000 CVEs or something like that. So it's getting, it's becoming a worse and worse problem. And I want to talk about the unknown because we were talking about uh, zero days and vulnerabilities and unknown uh, pieces of malware. And I think what a lot of people take for granted is the assumption that all the vendors know the same. And what is unknown is basically what we don't know. And I want to talk about how much we know and what customers need to ask their vendors about detection capabilities and orchestration of information to make sure that the unknown is limited and it's only what is truly new and hitting them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I sometimes speak to customers and they, they talk about different cybersecurity vendors. And you know, sometimes a lot of those vendors OEM security from different places. And so you end up with lots of different feeds coming in. I think it's very important. And Fortinet from the very beginning has always owned its security. So we have our own AV team, we have our IPS team, app team, and that's very important because once you get all the information in, then you can start correlating across it. So using ML per threat vector, and then using AI across all the threat vectors, allow us to start to understand what's known and unknown across a wider scope. So we see more, going back to the fabric. We see more, and we have better information, uh, again, across all the different threat vectors, whether it be email, files, URLs, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Challenge number two, coming up again mainly from CISO and CSO, they feel there are current silos that they work within, which is the security and the networking. And this silo approach is no longer serving them as it creates performance, operational, and security gaps that keep hiring the risk that they need to address and make it super hard for them to coordinate everything across their infrastructure. Basically, they're asking, we almost feel like we need to compromise between security for performance or performance for security. How are we solving for that? Yeah, I think that um, depending on the size of the company, so uh, very large companies are still very much siloed. There's the uh, security team and the networking team and the infrastructure team, and they basically build all those things separately. Uh, even networking infrastructure and then they layer security on, it creates gaps 
It also creates inefficiencies in the operations piece. And so, you know, our view is that networking and security should be converging together. And so uh, SD-WAN and firewalling and routing and switching and all those things need to come together alongside all the security components. Once you do that, you have a much more efficient operation and you start, I, I, I see suddenly the CISO and the CIO teams working together to build out things like secure SD-WAN. Um, also implementing things like zero trust inside there. So more and more functionality that comes together so you can operationally build it and it stops gaps appearing inside your edges. Which is part of the challenge that a lot of SOC team addresses, the need to constantly coordinate between different function. And we know it also from uh, user experience. We see more and more system coming in to allow you to monitor user experience from the beginning all the way to the application, what used to be in silos. Yeah, and I think that's very important because in our digital world today, um, that user experience is very important, uptime, uh, things like latency, and so the ability to measure that user experience from the endpoint, the user, through the network, uh, into the application is very important. And we think what's also important, I hear sometimes maybe some of the cloud cybersecurity vendors say, well, we just need an endpoint and we just need a, something in the cloud. And everything in between is kind of irrelevant, I don't care. Well, it's very important for that digital experience. And so not only do you need to measure from the uh, endpoint to the Wi-Fi, to the SD-WAN, to the cloud, but you also need to be able to look at it closely. Let's say, for example, I'm experiencing some issues with a particular application. Is it the Wi-Fi? Is it the network? Is it the, is it the, is it the work, workstation itself? And so being able to identify those pieces and zoom in and fix it is just as important as measuring the experience itself. Yes, and there are more conversation around conversion of IoT and OT. So those used to be also separate systems. Mm -hmm. A lot of the OT environment is still dark environment or not connected, but the team are expected to monitor them in a coordinated way because attacks can appear in many of those systems and then transition to lateral movement. Yeah, well, I think there's a, there's, there is a difference between o operational technologies and IoT. Um, we're seeing more threats ransomware specifically uh, because it can shut down infrastructure in the OT environments because they've allowed ac external access, remote access. Because of COVID, because of supply chain, uh, they're allowing access. And so we're seeing a lot more activity uh, inside the OT environments where they're trying to make sure there's micro-segmentation or firewalling or visibility or, or NAC, all those things, because it's becoming a big risk for them. And so the ability to understand the, NAC, uh, the, the IoT and OT environments is very important going forward. And it's an architectural conversation. So a lot of our customers come to us and they reevaluate the entire architecture and not just solve it through one solution. Well, I think that's happening, I think, across everything. It's, yeah, let me just solve this problem and move to the next. No, let me architect or put a blueprint in place for the next five years and then work backwards on how I'm going to get there. All right, challenge number three, which is dear to my heart, as it comes from mainly the SOC team. Okay. Uh, well, we were talking about speed. We were talking about speed to prevention in our first challenge. We were talking about speed of operation and performance in our second one, both of them very demanding environment that the SOC team need to balance. And the SOC team now come back and say, no, we feel that we're too slow. We're too slow in reacting. We're too slow to scale when something has happened. We have too much things going on. They basically look at you and say, is it even humanly possible that we will be able to catch up with everything? Well, I think the, the simple answer is no. It's not humanly possible. It's not humanly possible. <laughs> I think we uh, measured log4j was spreading 50 times faster than uh, samples we'd seen beforehand. And it was already fast enough. And so simply humans can't keep up. And so I think what customers are doing is, is really looking at a platform approach. We call it the fabric, Ghana call it the mesh. Uh, and, and instead of saying, well, let me take maybe 20 to 30 different security vendors and try and make them work together, which is sometimes very hard, is to say, let me take four to five platforms uh, and make those work together. And the, the key about it is when you do that, you can then build automation. The key about building a, a platform, yes, there's some efficiencies and some cost savings and not training people across everything, but the end goal is automation. So if I see something, the system can respond automatically. If I have a vulnerability in an endpoint, I can tell my SD-WAN to reroute. I can tell my, my SOC analysis to apply some extra controls, for example. The automation is key long-term because they aren't gonna get any slower. 
Yes, so we were talking about being present in all of the places where you can collect the data, going back to platforms or working in ecosystem that work together, being able to enforce it back in the location that is closest right. to the protected asset, detect early, build kind of a centralized knowledge base where everything works from, and this is the only way AI could be efficient in detecting on a cloud level. You obviously have AI and intelligence in the product, but if you want to understand flow that goes in your organization, the expectation is that you will be able to harvest data in a more common way. Yeah, well again, it's no good finding something if you can't do anything about it. So yes, the AI is very important, and it's, it's very important to look at those different attack vectors, uh, but you need to be able to do something about it. You need to be able to prevent it and stop it. Uh, you need both across, again, the entire infrastructure. And you need to do it faster than that. And you need to do it faster. <laughs> Constantly, Constantly faster. Constantly faster. Um, okay, one last question is basically about purchasing. So going back to slowing, slowing down um, time to secure. We actually see organizations struggle with hybrid environment today and adoption of new technology to be able to get to a pricing model, a purchasing model that is actually easy for them. Mm. Do we help them also in this aspect? We're going to try. Okay, so um, I think customers will be facing this hybrid environment for a long time, if not ever. Um, and so traditionally, endpoint has been they use devices to measure their license. Networks, they use throughput. You know, a lot of the cloud solutions are by user. And so customers, uh, it's very complex for a customer to take an end to end solution like Zero Trust, which is endpoint policy and, and cloud and then say, well, what's the pricing point? So what we're doing is, is moving to what we call a, a per user base pricing, uh, which is pretty unique in the industry. We, we refer to it as 40 Trust, which allows us to take a pricing model and normalize it across the endpoint, the network, and the cloud into per user. And I think, I think customers will like that. It'll be simplified and much easier than, for them to look at what they need in terms of a license, licensing perspective. I think I will stop here because this was supposed to be kind of a teaser. So if you all want to know how OS 7.2 helps you be secure, read more or join our webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a wonderful day.